G'day viewers. So a little while ago, Jay Mars put up a, a neat little video on the Turkish disarm from Thomas Page's broadsword. Um, and he was doing it pretty well the same way we've been doing it. But something about the Turkish disarm has been bugging me for a while. Okay, I think we've been doing it wrong. So this is an exploration of the Turkish disarm. So the way Page describes the Turkish disarm is like this. First of all, as he throws, we're on an outside guard, so we're in a wide stance. As your opponent throws the cut one, you carry it, and forward. Okay, with a half lunge. So, that nick's okay, with one important caveat. This is not a parry, this is a counter-attack. I need to be aiming to hit Simon on the head. If I'm lucky, that'll work. If I'm lucky, I'll counter his attack, and I'll hit him, and I'll win, which is good. What's more likely to happen is he's going to jam it up. But I must aim at the head as a counter-attack. If I just aim at a parry and he sees it, or he wasn't really going at my head, he was going at my leg, I will die. I must commit to that head to force him to either die or end up in this fight. Now, according to Paige, I then change to an outside, which most of us think means to come around this way while stepping forward with the left leg to come around here, which is all very fine, and seize the hilt with my left hand and do something like this and present the point. Okay? Now, there are some issues with this. Okay? If we swap places for a minute, I'll just... Get... Okay, so this is supposedly the finishing position. Now, the problem with this is having come around to the left and seized my hilt down here, Simon is not really controlling my sword. Okay? All I have to do, if we go back to the position, all I have to do is bring my elbow into my core and I'm out of it. And I can hit him. Okay? And with his sword up in my chest or whatever, okay, I would be tempted to immediately do something like this. Hit him on the head with a false edge. So, hey, more false edge in British swordsmanship. If you don't go around to the outside like that, you're much better off First of all, controlling this sword all the way through so nothing happens to it, sticking your pommel under that wrist. And as you come around, you've got one point of control here, use the elbow as the other point of control. Okay? So when you do this, important things to know are one, keep this pressure on. I need to be able to get this hook in to control either his wrist. Or his hilt, for the basket hilt, you can do this, this is good, okay? But I need to keep his sword isolated as I make my step around. As I come around, I want a second point of control, which is going to be the elbow. Now, if I just push it and Simon resists, nothing's going to happen. You're going to have to break the structure, which means popping it. It means coming up underneath it, popping it up, and rolling it over. Okay, and that will happen. If he shifts his weight to kind of think, just keep following. And he'll eventually go down. And another point about that is you get here and he really does resist and you're losing it, you're going to have to shift to something else. So in this case, that means the face. So I abandon the elbow and I slap him with a good chin whack right across the face and take him down the other way. So, overall that is our better sequence. If I'm going to make this counter attack and then move into a disarm, I want to do that, follow him up with that if necessary. That gives me two points of control over his sword arm, keeps the sword under control the whole time and completely controls him. Um, and if I don't do that, if I seize down here, I'm not controlling him. He can pull out of it. You've really got to get elbow or above. So, this is not what Paige describes, and that's a problem. So here is an alternative. I make my parry, as Paige suggests, but rather than changing to the outside line, I change to an outside guard. Okay? So essentially, we're in an equal bind here, exactly equal, nobody has an intrinsic advantage. 
So I do that. And the movement of my sword from here to here slides it up and gives me control of my opponent's sword. That allows me to do this. Now I've disarmed him. Okay? So the key action here is I get to my line and I change to an outside. I come in underneath my own arm, or possibly over the top, depending on where the swords are, and seize the head, and come around there. And he really does find it hard to even hang on to that. Okay, it is a much more effective disarm. Inside, change to the outside. Make sure you have cleared your own body before you step in. And then you've got that. Okay? If you come underneath, you don't even need to step. You can just reap it straight out of there without any problems. Okay? So, summary. Having gotten here, if you come around here, you want a second point of control. Don't just go for the hip. Go for the elbow. If you do it, failing for whatever reason, go for the head. But what is better is to clear that sword out of the way by changing from an inside to an outside guard without a disengagement. Okay? Which, if you guys go to an inside guard, inside guard, okay? They're clever enough, and then you will notice that is a kind of crosswise pattern. Okay? It is that action and has parallels and small sword and all sorts of things. So, that is my commentary on the Turkish disarm. So, one last thing to add, um, and that is many, many years ago, probably 10 years ago, David Teague showed me an alternative interpretation of the Turkish disarm. I can't remember what it was. It may have been pretty well that. Um, so, if it was, well done, Dave. I now agree with you. Um, if not, then there's a third option out there. <laughs>